Welcome to Reanimator Reviews. I'm Rayan, and today I'm going to talk about Doom Asylum. I believe this is from 1987, and it was a straight-to-video release, so no theatrical run on this one. The movie starts out with Mitch and Judy driving in their convertible, just celebrating a huge win that Mitch just got for Judy, where she will never have to do another manicure again. They're talking about how they're going to start a new life together and send her child to boarding school so they can do it without her. Where uh, there's a not, it's not like a freak accident because he's not paying attention to where he's driving because they're just making out and doing all this sexy stuff and uh, horrible car accident where Judy gets her hand chopped off and um, presumably perishes. And we believe that also Mitch presumably perishes. Mitch is taken to the coroner's office where they start to do the autopsy. And after removing his face, they um, realize, whoops, whoopsie daisy. Um, uh, he's not, he's not dead, but he's pissed. He's very pissed. So he ends up killing both of the medical examiners and then gets sent to an institution. Fast forward 10 years and it is actually Judy's daughter and a bunch of her friends and her boyfriend, I believe, that are going to said asylum, which is now abandoned, to just hang out and party. And uh, they meet Tina and the Tots, who are a, I don't know if they're a progressive whatever band just playing, just minding their own business, and um, the two groups do clash, where there's uh, also a budding, perhaps, romance between Darnell and I think it was Rapunzel. I think she's the drummer. And um, yeah, suddenly people just start disappearing. They're talking about how there's a lot of lore around this building in particular, which you, you I mean, you get with like a lot of abandoned places, especially if they're asylums that all you know, this crazy stuff has happened and kids have gotten their faces cut and blah, blah, blah. But like, actually, um, Mitch never left. Mitch is still there. Just chilling in the basement, watching old movies, apparently. And he starts to pick off the teenagers one by one, or are they teenagers? Early, early twenties, young adults, who knows? But yeah, I'm going to leave it off here as it is spoiler free. What did I like about this movie? I really like that Patty Mullen plays both characters. She plays Judy as well as Kiki, her daughter. And um, they know what they're doing. They so know what they're doing with this movie. It is definitely a comedy. The way the characters are written is ridiculous. The dialogue is ridiculous. There's so many like Freddy Krueger-esque one-liners from Mitch that are just so stupid. And a lot of them are pertaining to lawsuits and just, like, situational stuff. It's just cringe. It's so cringe, and it's a lot of dad jokes, but, like, I'm, I'm here for it. And I don't think that anyone involved in this film went into it thinking, like, this is going to be, like, an Oscar-worthy cinematic piece of art. It, it's not. It's hilarious. It's so dumb. <laughs> I had a really good time watching it. There are these... <laughs> really cheesy extended scenes between Darnell and Rapunzel because they they had a moment and then they're both like taken off into this daydream world where they're running to each other with their arms out like with that you know swelling romantic music and this happens twice and it's hilarious it's so funny the it's just this movie's so funny there's one part where Kiki says to her boyfriend, you know, that we're going back to the place where my mom was killed and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, what can I do? You know, what can I do to make you feel better? And she's like, can I call you mom? And he was like, sick, go ahead call me mom. So she literally calls him mom for the rest of the movie. And just, it's so funny. At one point he's like, you wanted me to kiss you. And now you don't want me to kiss you. And she's like, mom, that's incest. It was so funny. It was so funny. There's a part where She's praying to God and offers um, to buy God a Bloomies charge card, which, like, how do you pass that up, you know? <laughs> it's just, what is this movie? Like, this movie 
whomever created this movie was like, I'm going to make a cult classic. I'm going to make something that people will watch and then be like, guys, you got to watch this. This movie's so stupid. It's so ridiculous. It's just, it's just ridiculousness. I loved it so much. Also, like, apparently this is Kristen Davis's starring, like, first first film ever the girl from sex in the city the brunette didn't know that good for her she's i guess she's come a long way uh what did i not like about this movie the sound design is so weird i don't know if that's on purpose or just that's all they could afford it's not good it's just some of the sounds don't even make sense there was a part where uh, Tina's walking around in a hallway and it sounds like squelching sounds, but it's supposed to be her walking in heels on like tiles. So I was very confused about that. There's a lot of shots where it's perspective from the, uh, the sociopath that's walking around, you know, offing everyone and you just hear him breathing and I at first was just really annoyed by hearing him breathe like that and then i was like kind of getting concerned like does does he need to see pulmonary like what is that like he shouldn't be breathing like that and that kind of took me out of it a little bit i felt like the score as well sometimes didn't make a whole lot of sense it was the 80s i'll, I'll give it a little bit of a pass but sometimes the score was just not great also, all the cutaway scenes to Mitch in the basement watching not just like one entire movie that would be cohesive clips of, I think it was like five to six different movies. And he, you know, do something like he tied up Kiki and then was like, hold up, I got to finish my movie and like goes back down to the base. Like, what are you doing? Just focus on, on doing this one task, sir. I shouldn't, I shouldn't judge on that, but it was a strange choice for the movie definitely um yeah i mean if you're into schlock if you like patty mullen check it out it's it's so ridiculous it also has that trope again of a coroner eating while they're dealing with a dead body which like they would never allow that like the what's the the lab governing agency i can't remember i i should know this because i literally look at the sign every time i'm at work in our lab but they would never allow that never never so many fines so many fines but what why why that trope where did that trope come from does anyone know because it is everywhere in movies i know there's that whole juxtaposition between eating and dead body but like why why is that? It just, it catches me off guard every time. Um, I think I will rate this movie probably like a 2.5 out of 5. I had a really good time watching it. I probably would watch it again. Um, it's just so stupid. I loved it. I loved it. I think it's probably when you know that you're creating something that's going straight to video, you just don't, you don't have to put any of your ideas to the side you can just do whatever you want and I do really appreciate that I am a fan of independent film for sure so that was great um I found this streaming on Tubi which is a free app that does have commercials in it which is fine because I could always use a little bit of a break and uh have you seen this movie what are your thoughts on this movie please let me know in a comment down below I'd love to hear your thoughts and what your favorite part of the movie was Darnell had a really nice, like, awesome, huge nameplate necklace. I should have worn mine for this video. I just can't compete with his. His was just so majestic. But uh, if you haven't yet, please do subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you. Hit the bell for all notifications of further uploads and live streams. Like the video if you did like the video, or you could like the video if you like Patty Mullen. Don't forget to find me on Facebook at Ray Animator Reviews, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Ray Animator. My reviews are also available in podcast form on iTunes. Thank you to the Farsighted Network. Please don't forget to check out all of their awesome creators and content as well. And I will see you guys later. Bye.